called Roll In. Oh, we got us. Oh, we got a little bit in there, but that's all good. Dan, how are you, man? Yeah, good, man. How Did you are feel you? Feel that gear shift? Went yeah. from real casual talking about MMA, and then we're like, "Ha how are you, Dan?" I still feel cash. You still feel cash? I'm ra- I'm laxed, bro. You are lax. Yeah. Tell me, um, you're from Melbourne. Mm. Are you born in Melbourne? Born and raised. Born and bred. Born and bred in Melbourne, but you're a, of Australian Indian heritage, I believe. I mm. uh, did a little bit of research on you before, man. Tell me, take me back just to a little bit in the earlier childhood. What's the early influence for you for stand-up? Is there anything in the family, like any family members performing, watching it on TV? What brings you to want to do this crazy job? Um, I liked Seinfeld. The show? A lot. And I got into stand-up, like, in high school, just like Louis and Chappelle. I used to watch, my mum used to like comedy, so she'd always play, like, specials, and she used to watch Dylan Moran. Oh, wow. All that, all the specials. We sh- she took me to see Danny Boy. When I was in like year six, so I went. So that was my first comedy show, and he played the suburb that we're from. Like it was like a local, he, like he did like one of those tours. You know what I mean? Really? And he, t- he we went and saw him, and I was like staring, and my mum was like, st- I just laugh because I was just like, oh, <laughs> you know. just en- enamored. I was enamored by Danny Boy, yeah. That's and I so got to, cool. I met him the other. I met him in comedy festival actually. That's nice. Did you tell him the story? No, it was the worst way you would want to meet someone you love. <laughs> Why? Because, like, I was doing a show, and the the guy who was doing his show had just finished. Right. And my thing was, as soon as it finishes, before all the audience come out, I'd run in the back, because i got a tech set up. So I, like, run in through the back. As I'm running in, Danny Boy is running out. And I, in my head, I saw him, and I was like, that's Danny Boy, just keep it chilled, you know. And I went, Danny Boy! Like, the whole audience looked. And it was like, and he was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of these, yeah. as he's running off. I love you. Yeah. That's cool, man. It's funny you mentioned Dylan Moran and, and, and some of these early ones that that mum was influencing you with as well. Because mm. I've watched some of your stand up, and what I, I was not like Dylan Moran. <laughs> no, but what I did notice was that you have a very you like a, a lot of physical comedy, which man, I'm a big fan of. I'm oh, biased yeah. with it, like the performance, the voices, the face. Yeah. Um, with that style. Was that something that you just always liked watching or was it something that you just naturally did? How did you come about that style? Um, I don't know. It's like I just started uh, maybe like a, a year and a half in. I remember I did a gig and I remember thinking like, oh, you can do this. And it's like you're doing it with your face. Yes. And then I was like, that's something. I'd never really play with it too much until like maybe two years ago. I was like starting to do pause more and so I just... Just happened naturally. It's a sort of hard thing to describe, but you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because I found, I mean, I, I just went to the East Coast and what I found was that the audiences were very uh, comedically educated, but they liked rhythm. They kind of liked punchline, mm. you know, not too much fat on your jokes. Just get to it, get to it, get to it. So when I see a physical comic who has more of a presence and will really sort of, you know, take their time with things as well, I, I, I admire it. So have you found that being based in Melbourne, that's been something that you've had to work at landing that in those audiences? I have no fucking clue, bro. <laughs> I, got no, I never thought of it that deep. I didn't know that that I was a physical comedian until you said it. Really? Yeah. You just do your thing? I just do my thing. That's awesome. But I'm just not like I'm not like a jokey guy. Right. I don't do like the jokes where they're like a wit comb or something where it's all like, I went to the shops and this happened. Like it's not that. <laughs> it's just like, oh, I thought about this or it's like a story or something. So it's maybe it's physical because I... Their jokes are shit, so I've got to like, do shit to make them better. Hey, preach, brother, <laughs> preach. you got to let the charisma carry it. Come on. Yeah. Um, that's cool. And I noticed you're obviously online now is where you do a lot of great sketches and stuff like mm. that. That seems to be, number one, it looks like you're having heaps of fun. Mm. Number two, does that seem like that's just part of stand-up comedy now? Getting the career going is having a bit of an online presence, not just doing stand-up alone. you got to do something. I, do, I like it because it's fun. And, uh, you know, you meet lots of cool people. And like it's like you know, it gets you views and it helps you sell tickets. That was the main thing. But it is fun. Me and my mate who I film with Zito and Chang that we film like every week. And sometimes we like we film and it's like oh it's cold. We gotta film. We gotta force these TikToks. Out. Sometimes we film and we're like that was actually a fun day with the boys. Yes. That's kind of like the whole point of the thing. But like yeah, if I could quit one, I'd fuck off the TikToks and just do stand up. Just that traditional stand-up, yeah. That's the main thing I like to do. Well, you mentioned doing it weekly like, and bringing that discipline and that work <laughs> ethic into it. 
What's your process like in terms of discipline for stand-up? I mean... Do a gig every day, doesn't matter what. Do a gig every day, no matter what. Yeah, I don't like to go below eight. Sometimes it happens, you know, you get sick or something, but yeah, eight, minimum eight gigs a week. That's wow. fucking... I think that's good. And if you're not necessarily going up each night with something new that you've even thought about, just, just see what happens. It's always going to be different. Yeah, just fucking go up there and have a, have a crack to say whatever happened. Bomb. I bomb a lot. If you're doing mics, if you don't, bo- if you're if you're killing it open mics, just shit. Yeah, you're not you're not stretching yourself. Just go up there, do something dumb, and say something whack, and then <laughs> everyone laughs at you. That's like more interesting. I feel. Yeah, so absolutely. At a good gig like this, I'll do really well. But at a mic, I'll fucking go up there and just, just say something cool. Cause then that that'll, you know, like it's like going to the gym, like. You don't get like one like centimeter every time you lift. It's like a micro centimeter of muscle tissue that grows every time your your body, um, you know, you, you fucking UFC. It's like imagine <laughs> if you measured your arms every after every training. Right. You wouldn't even be able to see the increase each month. Yes, of course. Not what he's saying. That's how cool. It's not like, you know, it's just. Just try lots of little shit things. And know. you're planting seeds sort of in the subconscious and, and then you never know, like down the line, that one weird whack thing that you said actually turns into a bit down yeah. the line. Or like, well, you know, I've got this fucking crook line about how white chicks are the only girls that like me now and that's my least favourite genre of puss. <laughs> that's like a funny line and it's like a very popular line that I say. But when I first said it, everyone was grossed out. And the comedians were picking on me for it. Oh, it's your favorite genre. That was like, they were being mean to me because I said such a dumb right. thing. Right. And I was like, shamed of it. But you said puss as well. I said puss. Oh, that's great. But they were like, oh, it's your favorite genre. Like, they were like, oh, puss man. Like, and then after a while, I started saying it. And I was like, oh, no, this is funny. Of course. But like, I had to go through it to get to the... I thought it was ready right out of the gate, personally. I mean... I think you just love puss, man. Puss is just such a fun... It's such a softer term. You know, it's so silly, puss. Yeah, you know, yeah. oh, it's it's just just great to it say. Takes the edge off. Takes exactly yeah. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good, man. Well, I mean, what what is a good gig for you you nowadays? You know, because you said you do eight gigs. When you walk off stage and go, "Fuck, that was fun." It's much like a sketch comedy um, session that was fun. What is it for you that makes a good gig? Like, are you saying what makes a good gig where I not do new shit or what makes a good gig as just in general? Just for you, because obviously, like you said, if you're going in there and you're crushing all the time because you got the banger material and you know that you can do that, what is it for you that, that you love when you walk off stage and go, that was a good gig for me today, I like that? Sometimes you don't have a hot set, but you still feel really good after a gig. I just feel like it's just like you were present and you were... You, you talked and well and you were having fun with your performance. Yeah. I think that's sometimes fun. Sometimes you don't want to get into that too much. You don't want to be like bombing and be like, I think I did great. Like, yeah. But <laughs> if there's more than 20 people, then you should probably try a little bit. Yeah. But also, like, if you're getting paid, you want to do good shit. I, if someone's paying me, I'll I'll do well. Yeah. But if it's like, um, it's an unpaid gig and they give you seven minutes and there's 15 people, I'm like, I'm going to go up there and fucking make myself sad <laughs> you know what I mean because yeah. <laughs> it's like it's better opportunity for writing here than you know what I mean uh, yes so that's how I feel about it But and obviously it's from the sounds of things eight gigs a week that is your writing process so to speak but if in between that are you when you have written are you a guy that sits at the laptop and stares into the void no. for a couple of hours no. are you more voice notes are you just like riffing with mates how do you tend to come up with material other than just being on stage everything that's not pen on paper so like riffing with mates um, you know, I sometimes I talk to myself with the voice notes on. Yep. Sometimes I like get stoned and just put the voice notes on and just talk theories that half it's not funny, but then I'll just say something funny in the middle. Or like if I'm talking to a girl and I'll make her laugh, I'm like, oh, that's funny. I'll write that down. Like little, you know, it's the same as everyone else. You like Nothing puss? Special. That's good. Puss. Yeah. <laughs> Genre of puss. I like puss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fun. And man, what does the family think? Of the stand-up comedy, like, have they been to gigs? Have they seen? They some of I know it. you had your your it. recent show was Body Language. Yeah, they all came and they loved it. That's awesome, man. Yeah, the whole family backs it. No one has any issues. Yeah, great. When I started, they said get a backup, and I said no, and they went cool. Was, they were like, okay, like, very liberal family, very artistic family, all girls mainly. Yep. So like, everyone's ch- no, no issues. That's awesome. Yeah. And yeah. what's the what's the goals for you because early on in stand-up we set little goals you know you're starting the open mic you just i just want to get paid for a set i want to be able to do a good 10 now i mean look speaking to you you're doing eight gigs a week that's already such a high work rate for anyone at any level what is the goal for you now i want to go in I want, i'm trying to go to america yep get famous <laughs> yes, perfect. 
Yeah, I'm going to Texas on Tuesday. Oh, wow, man. Don't. And um, I've got some friends there who are going to get me up for some gigs and just dip my toe in the water for six weeks. Yep. And then I'll probably move somewhere, either to London or to New York in the next year. Yeah. I just want to like do it and then every come here, do a big theatre tour of Australia every year. Beautiful. That's my goal, yeah. Just to be a big, like, relocate to a big city and get do well and then come back once a year and just do like a celebratory theatre tour. Yes. And just go to the, the swim spots and eat lots of mangoes. That, like, that's, oh. the, that's the goal. That's my goal now. Yeah. That's fucking sick. Yeah. And, what, and what is like, what are some of the comedians that you've met on your journey so far that may be like a little bit further ahead in the game that like you look up to or is anyone that's working today, just even in the world, maybe you don't even, you haven't met them but you really admire them. What is it about them that you're like, I love that? Oh, Ari Maddy I like a lot. Yep. He's smashing it. He's a sick cunt and he's just funny as we've done heaps of gigs and he's just like good for a chat and he's good to watch. Yes. Um, James McCann is just, he was the first nice, like first like famous comedian to be nice to me. Yeah. We did like, I did my first Crab Lab, it was a gig back in Melbourne mm -hmm. and he was like the last act and he was like, come sit with us, talk to us. Then he just happened to be like super famous. So it's like, oh yeah, it's always happens to like the nicest cunts. Yes, like I think there's a trend in like a really sweet, genuine person always ends up doing a bit better than somebody who's like, you know, you have to prove yourself to me. So yeah. I've always found that. Isn't, isn't that comforting though? Do you find that the people that are tend to be very good just relax because they know how hard this thing is and they're just, they're just happy to see anyone come up? Yeah, I think so. I think so too. And um, I think it's like, I know I've got a mate, this this is a separate story, but my mate Joe Green, shout out to Joe Green. You know Jesse Green? Yes. A good friend of mine. He told me like when he started comedy, um, he was out the front of a gig and Ronnie Chang was there. And he was like, oh, hey, Ronnie. And Ronnie didn't know that he was just like a fan. So he was like, oh, hey, man, what's your name? And he's like, oh, it's Joe. Joe. He's like, oh, nice to meet you, Joe. Yeah, I've got to go, but I'll, I'll see you around. He's like, oh, okay. And like four years later, he was like at a gig and he saw Ronnie come in. And Ronnie looked at him and went, oh, my God, Joe. And wow. he was like, what the fuck? I met him for like 30 seconds on the street. And then five years later, he remembered. It was like, it's just, it's like there is a super nice wholesome in the moment guy yes it's crazy level of success i think there's a relationship between those that's a superpower hey just to be able to remember people's names and make those connections that quickly yeah now that's well cool. asians have to be good at remembering names i've got gonna say the and joe is a very common name he might have had a fucking <laughs> dark, you know what i mean hey joe and he's just like he fucking remembered and i'm like whoo he's like shit it was joe jack or john one of the three. Yeah, oh, like. that's cool man um was there any advice you had early on that, you know, advice is always weird in comedy because it's just a reps game, but was there anything that really helped you um, and you wish you'd learned a little bit earlier? Like, because a lot of people that are watching this might be open micers or people coming up in the comedy game or people wanting to get to know you. Is there anything that you found to be really helpful? Yeah, the thing that changed me a lot, it was, it's dumb advice, but it was like not dumb at the time. It was like, just, can you just make like one set of jokes good? Okay. Like, get it 10 minutes. Yes, And just yes. make that good. Like, don't keep writing. I thought, like, oh, like, I, there's a club promoter here. He doesn't want to see the city he saw me do last time. Right. And I was like, no, they want to see you do something good. Yes. So just do it good. So that was very helpful. When someone said, have you got five? I was like, nah, but I come up with five all the time. And like, it was all shit. Just come up with a f <laughs> one good five. And I was like, oh. Refine and, and tweak. And when I did that, everything started happening for me. That's cool. Just come man. up with a good seven minutes. That's sweet. And where can people find you? I know you're off to, uh, to Texas on Tuesday. Uh, this will be out before then. But, uh, but where can people find you on the socials and follow the journey? If you just type in uh, Dan Rosario on anything, my Instagram and TikTok are Dangelo. But my name is Dan, D A H N. Yep. So Dan Jello or Dan Rosario, Dan Rosario. I don't fucking know. Just have a t You'll tag me in this, bro. We will. You'll tag me. We will. Mm. Get it out there. Well, man, all the best. Um, look forward to seeing your journey, seeing you back around the way. And uh, much like Ronnie Cheng, I'll remember. Yeah, cheers, bro. I'll remember you, it, Joe. And oi, Perth is the best state in Australia. All the other states are gay. We're a state. This fuck yeah, the baby. Best state. Perth is the best state. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> no, I like it. We're, a, we're, we're pretty much other state. There's nothing else here. Yeah, it's just it's WA. It's we Perth. run WA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Appreciate you, bro. Thank Thanks, you so bro. much. Remember that, Melbourne. Cheers, brother. Thank you. Dan Rosario, ladies and gentlemen.